Alrighty then, so now that we've covered both of the, those main options in the drag and drop system, what we're going to look at now is coding these by hand in GML. It's really not all that different at all, um, and you'll see as we go through like how those drag and drop events translate to code events and vice versa. So if we go into our object player now, and we get rid of basically everything we already have. So we get rid of all that, we get rid of the, get rid of the step event, um, get rid of this friction. In fact, that's the one we'll. No, we won't start with friction actually. We'll we'll get rid of the create event for now as well. So we just back to just our left and right events. Um, once you learn a little bit more GML, you realize you don't even need these. You can just in the step event um, use a piece of code that checks if the left and right mouse, uh, not mouse buttons, keyboards uh, buttons are being pressed. But for now, we'll just we'll stick to just using these left and right uh, events because they work fair enough. So if we go to control here and uh, pretty much the, the only action you ever need when you're working with GML is uh, execute code. So we drag that into there. So whenever you're moving left, I, I'm pretty sure we covered this in, in the first basic tutorial, is to basically just say x minus equals 3. And then that in itself is identical to the very first thing we did in this tutorial, which was jump to position uh, uh, th minus 3 relative. Uh, that is basically an exact translation of that. We're taking our x coordinate and we're literally just subtracting three from it, and then we're ending the line of code with a semicolon just to tell the game that that's the end of the line of code. So we hit tick there, and then we'll do the same thing over here with right. Only we'll do we'll do x plus equals three semicolon, and if we go OK, run that. And we have exactly what we had to start with. Literally no change, but it's just written in code as opposed to written in drag and drop. So, yep, that's literally exactly the same as the very first thing we did. How we do the next system, however, in GML is a little bit more complicated, only in the sense that there's actually a billion and one ways you could actually approach this, um, which is Part of the strength of uh, using code really is you can do things in a huge number of different ways to have pretty much the same outcome, but then depending how you do it, it allows you to do other things with the code and so on and so forth. So it really gives you that sort of flexibility and exact control over exactly how everything in your game happens. So we're going to look at pretty much the very simplest uh, way of replicating what we did before in code, which is basically to set our h speed to be a value. So our h speed, uh, I mean, we already know that, like, you can tell in GML when you've uh, written a variable that the object recognizes as sort of one of its primary sort of variables, is because, like, as you can see when I'm timing here, speed, it's just gray text there, and it's even come up with the autocorrect there, look, variable speed, and that, that'll tell us what our speed is, but what we want specifically is to change our h speed value, which is our horizontal speed. So that's a, a, a variable that affects uh, where the object is moved to every frame. So if we set that to 3 every frame, so h speed equals 3, every, oh no, actually minus 3 every frame because that's the left uh, arrow key. And hit OK, and we go to right and we do the same thing h speed equals 3. Notice how we're setting them straight to 3 and minus 3. So, as you might have guessed, this does pretty much exactly what we had before, only you'll notice I'm only, well, you won't notice because you can't see my keyboard, but I'm only tapping left and right to make the object move left and right because we're just setting our hate speed and we don't have our friction set up yet. So, we're literally just setting our speed to 3 and minus 3, and then there's no friction to slow it down at the moment, so it's moving forever. So, what we do is we go to add event and create. And you already know how to do this through drag and drop, but to do this through um, through code is very simple. You just type friction, and you can see it's turned red. It recognizes the variable friction. We type equals, and uh, what did we have before? Um, 0.25, I think. So, or is it just 0 0.2? Uh, 0 0.2 will do. I think header 5, and there we go. 
now we have the very basics of what we had before again, where we're accelerating. Well, we're not accelerating, actually. We're setting our speed to three, and then when we let go of the button, we're sliding to a halt because the friction is reducing our speed every single frame until it reaches zero. So now uh, what we want to do is uh, recreate the acceleration effect that we had before. So in order to make your object accelerate instead of just move is you can pretty much guess what we have to do here is instead of uh, when we move whenever we're holding the left key setting our H speed to minus three we just set H speed minus equals which you know we subtract from this value uh, what did we use before I think it was one yeah so we just subtract one from our H speed every time we're holding left tick right in the same we'll do the same thing over here so instead of setting our h speed to b3 we just set h speed plus no not equals plus plus equals one so now that should accelerate us one in either direction but of course we need to set our maximum speed otherwise we'll just go to crazy velocities super quickly so to set a maximum speed what we want to do is once again create our step event uh, put an execute code action into the step event and we're basically going to do the same thing we did over here with our variables which is to check uh, if the speed is greater than a certain value set the speed to be that value in whatever direction it happens to be so if uh, and then we want to open a pair of brackets like that and we want to put our condition in here so if speed is greater than the greater than symbol 6 so how if statements work actually while I'm here is we type once we type if here that registers that it's an if statement to the code and then we put our brackets here and it check the game will check to see if the stuff inside this bracket is true so if our speed is greater than 6 it will perform any actions we put here blah 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 blah, blah and then end with the semicolon it will will activate those if we want to do multiple actions as a result of um, a if statement what we want to do is use the sort of squiggly brackets I can't remember the exact term for these and then we write code in here and then all of this code that we write in here will get performed if this happens to be true we only need to set one thing to be true though so we don't actually need these open brackets all we need to do is put speed equals 6 so if speed is greater than 6, speed equals 6. And you can see how that is exactly the same as the drag and drop system that we had before. So if we hit tick now, we go OK. That should, unless I've forgotten anything drastic, yep, leave us with pretty much exactly what we had before. So press left, press right, you, you slide, sort of you start accelerating, and then you slide to a halt slowly. So that's the basics of movement in left and right. The only other thing we haven't covered, uh, which will be quite important for our top-down shooter, is how to stop because at the moment you could just move straight out of the screen. So you could you could just keep moving left forever or mo moving right forever, and we want to keep you contained in this space here. So we're going to look at doing that now. So I'm not actually immediately sure how you would accomplish this through the drag and drop system, and but I know a very, very simple way of doing it through the code. So my general rule of thumb is if something is very easy to do in code and can be done in like less than a line or so, like there's no point like using a complicated sequence of drag and drop actions to do it. You know, you're just you know, you're wasting time. So we're just gonna cover the very simplest way to do this using the GML code. So if you think about what we actually want to do using GML is we want to make sure that our X position, uh, our X coordinate of our player object is basically always inside the playable space, so inside the room. So we can easily do this by setting our X to be equal to one of two values. If we set, type the word min, open a bracket, what this uh, does what min does it will, so it will set our x coordinate to be whichever is smallest so the minimum of however many values we put into these brackets so if we set our x to be whichever is smaller um, its own x coordinates or the uh, the room underscore width which as you can see it's gone red there um, which is equal to the width of your room. So imagine if the game was trying to set your x value to be 700 and the, the width of the room is only 640. Um, 
it would check here every frame and it would set your X to be whichever is smallest out of those which would be 640 and would keep you inside the room. Um, otherwise if your X is currently like 500 and you're within the room it just sets your X to be itself again therefore meaning you know you it, it hasn't done anything. So that all that literally does is stops you moving out of the right hand side of the room. Now to do the opposite of that for the uh, the left hand side of the room, we want to say x equals max. You might have guessed what this does is sets x to be whichever is biggest out of however many variables you put in here. I mean, you can put more variables into here as well. You could be like y or fucking like twenty five or anything like that, you know. But obviously we don't need those, so we don't uh, we don't put them in. But um, we want to set our x to be the maximum of either whichever is biggest, its own x-coordinate, um, or zero. So basically, if you would be like a, a position of minus 20, that's outside of the room. So it would set, um, so zero would be bigger than x, therefore it would set your x-coordinate to be zero, so on the furthest left of the room. Uh, otherwise, if your x is 20 and you're inside the room, um, it would set your x to be itself again, because x is bigger than uh, bigger than zero. So those are the only two lines of code you need, hopefully, I think, if I recall correctly, to, uh, to keep you inside the room at pretty much all times. Now we're going to finish this compiling. We move left and right. As you can see now, we can't quite we can't move out of the room. We're overlapping a little bit because uh, the origin of our uh, player object is like uh, directly in the center, so that's where it's tracking our x coordinate to be. So, like as you can see, it's only tracking us as being outside the room if uh, our, our x coordinate, which is like dead in the center of this player object, would go over the edge. So, if we want to keep ourselves like fully inside the box. Um, like without like overlapping on the edge, we have to make a small slight change to the code we've written. It's very very simple though. All we need to do is basically, um, actually, first of all, we need to check how wide our sprite actually is in the first place. Um, it's 32 by 32. So we go to step, and uh, we go to x. We make x the smallest instead of x and the room width. We make it the smallest out of x and the room width minus 16 which is half the size of our ship so like we can't go beyond uh, so the center of our ship cannot go beyond the room width minus 16 and we set down here instead of 0 we just set 16 okay and then hopefully what that'll do, yep, yeah, and now we can't we can't move off the edge of the screen at all. And that overall is more or less everything you need to know about moving in sort of 2D space uh, with no real collisions or anything like that. So one bonus sort of extra thing uh, I may as well show you guys now is how to put basically all of that stuff that we've done into um, a, a single block of code, more or less. Um, so instead of having our left and right events, we're basically going to condense ourselves down to just being in the step event. So we don't need uh, this stuff anymore. We can delete these events entirely, and we're just going to rock our step event. So what we need to do is basically replace those events uh, with some if checks inside of uh, our player object. So all we're going to do is type if uh, keyboard check, uh, and then another open bracket, VK left. What well, that line of code does there, you can use F1 to uh, look up the exact definitions of these functions and exactly what they do. But um, all that's doing is basically this line of code here is exactly a replica of the event we had here that was the the keyboard left. This is basically that that event there. And uh, instead of uh, the actions in that event taking place, what will happen is the lines of code we put inside. Uh, these brackets will take place. So anything we put in here will happen when we hit left and supposed to uh, as opposed to the actions we put in place or the stuff that we put on the end of here and end with a semicolon. So I mean you already know what we did before is we put hate speed uh, minus equals one on the end of that. So if I now copy and paste that again and change VK to right and put hate speed to plus equals one, 
Here we've basically duplicated what we had in those left and right events, but kept them all condensed into one uh, one block of code, just so it's easier to keep track of more than anything. So now all of that line of code there, we still need to keep this uh, friction inside our create event. I mean, we could set this in our step event, but there's really no point because we only need to set our friction once and that's when the object is created. Um, there would be no point putting it in the step event because it would happen every single frame. And so there's, there's no need for us to set our friction again every single frame. We're just, we would just be wasting like uh, the processor's time. So now that that's done, uh, hopefully there should be absolutely no difference yeah, to what we had before. Hold left and right, move left and right, and we're golden. So that's everything. Uh, for like a bonus challenge, you could try now and use everything you've learned here to make the ship move up and down using the up and down arrow keys. Um, it, it's pretty much, you know, you just basically have to copy and paste everything um, you've already seen here, but instead of using X coordinates, you use Y coordinates. Uh, instead of H speed, horizontal speed, you use V speed, which is vertical speed. Um, otherwise, the code is pretty much exactly the same. Um, the, the code is almost exactly the same for making you not move up of the top and bottom as well. So you could you could have a go at that. Uh, next time around, we're just going to be looking at uh, basic like shooting and all that kind of stuff, and how to how to create new instances on the on the fly with uh, code, and how to shoot bullets and stuff. So I'll see you there. If anyone has any questions about anything I've talked about in this tutorial, or wants to learn more about sort of 2D movement, very and uh, like the drag and drop actions or um, any of the GML I've I've gone through or anything like that, please leave a comment. Uh, so please like, please subscribe if you you like the content, and you learned anything from it. Please share it around if you know people who would also benefit from this. And otherwise, just thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.